You can come in. Sir, you've been asked for me to give you a briefing on the situation in Southern Australia? Yes. It's not looking good. Already, we've had to cut off the states of Victoria, the Australian Capital Territory, New South Wales, Tasmania, and South Australia out from the rest of the country. We believe the radiation from New Zealand has affected people within those areas. The only way we can access these places now is by drone. I see. What are the people they're acting like? It's hard to describe, sir. It began in Tasmania three days ago before we were receiving reports from New South Wales and Victoria of widespread civil unrest, along with reports of discoloration from the sun. People affected have begun to attack other people. We think whatever is happening to New Zealand is now happening in Australia and it is spreading. A leading theory for the time being based on data and reports is that any direct observation of the sun causes people to lose their minds. They don't act human anymore but as creatures. Fucking hell. Has anyone found a cure to this yet? Not that we know of yet, sir. And how are our forces going in New Zealand at the moment? For the time being, the radiation hasn't affected them. It seems to have been a rapid burst of energy that affected New Zealand at the time and killed off most of the population of the North Island before our soldiers were deployed. The objects still remain above Auckland and Taupo for now though and NASA hadn't confirmed what they are yet. Right. Has there been any explanation for the North Island is physically moving towards the Southern Ocean? We really don't know that either yet so whatever is happening in the North Island of New Zealand at the moment, it's defying all natural laws of physics and science. We know whatever these things are that are above New Zealand have a key role in what's happening to our people in the South. Is there also any word on spread of the radiation within the South? For the time being, it only seems to be contained within South Australia for now. We are getting no reports of radiation poisoning or sickness anywhere else further up north including here in Brisbane. I see. Keep me updated on any further information. We're mobilizing to evacuate uninfected civilians to the northeast, but it's chaos on the ground. We may need to consider more extreme measures to contain this. Such as? Targeted strikes on heavily infected areas. It's not a decision we make lightly, but if this spreads further north in a worst case scenario, drastic action will need to be taken. God help us. Prepare plans for evacuation and containment. We'll reconvene in two hours. This is Nine News. In developing information, it has been confirmed by the government that all areas of southern Australia have been declared as total losses. Major urban areas affected by the sudden radiation poisoning include Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Canberra and Hobart. A national state of emergency has been issued for all of Australia as all airspace and communications in southern Australia have gone dark. Evacuation effort have begun of unaffected residents in the south. However, the Australian government have issued plans to begin bombing campaigns in affected areas to reduce the spread. Meanwhile, scientists around the world have begun to try and rationally explain the situation occurring within New Zealand. While many theories ranging from tectonic ground movement to extraterrestrial life, one thing is clear. The events occurring in New Zealand and Southern Australia defy scientific explanation. Hello. 
This is a national broadcast which is being aired within all areas of the South Island at 4.02 p.m. New Zealand Standard Time on the 3rd of July 2022. This broadcast has been issued at the request of the Republic of Aotearoa South and Z by TVNZ. Please pay attention to this message. Within the past few weeks, our nation has seen catastrophic events the likes of which never seen or explained before. Our people in the North Island have been killed along with most heads of the New Zealand government and the Prime Minister. Most major urban cities of New Zealand have also been affected including Auckland, Wellington, Tronga and Hamilton. Furthermore, unidentified objects have landed above the North Island of New Zealand including Auckland and Tupno. The object above Auckland has been measured at a diameter of approximately 20 km wide along with the object above Tupo being a diameter of approximately 30 km wide. Both of these objects are perfectly circular and are completely black with no identifying features. Whether these objects are from Earth or of extraterrestrial origin is still unknown. For your immediate safety, do not attempt to travel to the North Island at any or all costs. These objects have emitted lethal amounts of radiation which have killed an estimates 3.2 million people in the North Island and are affecting people within Southern Australia. It is unknown as to how the radiation hasn't begun affecting people within the South Island or spread anywhere else. However, it appears that for the time being, the radiation within the North Island has stopped. Soldiers from the Australian Army have been deployed within the North Island in order to rescue potential survivors from the area. Unexplained tectonic activity and rapid ground movement have also caused the North Island landmass to physically move in a southeastern direction towards the Southern Ocean. Scientists and researchers around the world have formed no valid explanation so far to try and explain the phenomenon. However, reports have come in from Australian soldiers that key structures within the North Island such as the Sky Tower in Auckland may have interacted with the objects. While this is unconfirmed, it is expected that all areas of the North Island are a complete and total loss. In order to ensure and continue the continuity of New Zealand along with the surviving population, the Republic of Aotearoa South will take over as the leading government of New Zealand, comprised of surviving heads of government. The new capital will be relocated to Christchurch as political parties will be established once more. We'll keep you updated within the following days. Please stand by and stay strong. This has been a broadcast from your government. Thank you for your diligent attention. This is One News at 8. Good evening. We bring you developing information from the East Coast as Australian naval forces from the North Island have made landings in the South Island in hopes of helping to evacuate people to Australia. The United Nations have also intervened within the South Island, providing supplies of food, water, shelter, and emergency accommodation for affected people. Refugee camps have also been established within areas such as Christchurch and Kaikoura for any potential survivors from the North Island. Ships from the Australian Navy such as the HMAS Canberra and the HMAS Adelaide are off the coast of Christchurch at the moment. Making coordination with local authorities and emergency organisations to evacuate people. In more developing information, the North Island of New Zealand appears to be moving steadily through the Southern Ocean, taking along what is left of any urban infrastructure in the North Island. This has baffled the international and science community as a whole seeing as there is simply no natural or explainable phenomena which could move such a large landmass as a whole. Speculations involve the appearance of what appear to be large circular objects hovering above Auckland and Taupo. Some argue that these objects are somehow influencing the movement of the landmass of the North Island. The landmass itself is moving at speeds exceeding 100 km height, leaving unprecedented wake behind it along with mass disturbances of water triggering tsunami warnings within the South Pacific and the Oceanic region. Reports also indicate that there are still more than 14,000 Australian soldiers stationed within the North Island, travelling along with it. Seismic activity has surprisingly remained minimal within the landmass. Data from GeoNet show minimal earthquake activity along the North Island despite the fact that it is moving at a consistent pace. We'll continue to bring you updates as this unprecedented situation unfolds. For now, all residents in coastal areas of the South Island are urged to follow evacuation orders immediately and comply with instructions provided by the government and emergency agencies.
have just received confirmation from our Five Eyes partners. They've unanimously agreed to our proposed course of action. The UN Security Council has also given tacit approval, given the extreme circumstances. Right, I see. Should we review the plan one last time before executing this operation? Certainly. We'll deploy a series of targeted napalm strikes on Melbourne and Sydney. Our primary objectives are to neutralize the infected population and create a firebreak to prevent further spread. We've identified key zones where the infection is most concentrated. For Sydney, these areas include Darlinghurst, Newtown, and Bondi. For Melbourne, they include Port Melbourne, Docklands, the CBD, and Brunswick. And for Canberra, these include Turner and Campbell. Hellfire will rain upon these cities. Simultaneously, we should be evacuating all uninfected civilians from South Australia to the northeast. Military escorts are standing by to ensure safe passage. Is that correct? There is nobody left to save. Even our own military can't enter. The safest course of action is to commence the firebombing operations at night. The sun infects people during the day. We will commence with the firebombing at 2,300 hours tonight. Conventional containment methods have failed. The infected are. They are not human anymore. We can't risk them breaking quarantine and infecting the rest of Australia. Our military can only hold them off for so long. Our models show that without this intervention, we'll lose control of the entire southern and eastern coastlines within 130 hours based on our military might and capacity to contain the spread along with how fast it can be spread in our cities. The weight of this decision. God help us. Very well. Initiate the operation. May history judge us kindly. I'll coordinate with state authorities to begin mass evacuation. We'll need to manage public communication carefully to prevent panic. Agreed. Let's pray this works. For the sake of our nation, and perhaps the world, we cannot fail.
We bring you developing and critical information coming in from South Australia where the Australian government have executed a bombing campaign of key urban areas. These areas include Sydney, Melbourne, Canberra, Adelaide and Hobart. According to reports, the spread of the radiation and infected people are unable to be contained for the long term and with no cure in sight or being developed. The government have made the decision to mitigate the spread of the infected by bombing them. This decision has come under heavy scrutiny from the media due to matters of morality and with some accusing the government of bombing innocent people instead of the infected. Bombing campaigns above these areas are carried out at night due to the fact that the radiation spreads and infects people during the day due to exposure towards the sunlight. As of this time, there have been no further reports in any other parts of Australia regarding the discoloration of the sun or widespread illness. Many are convinced that this is as a result of the unexplained catastrophe occurring within New Zealand where similar radiation poisoning killed off most of the entire population of the North Island. Of New Zealand The United States government have offered to intervene by supplying Australia with aircraft and even weapons of mass destruction to use against urban areas. According to leaked reports, some high-ranking officials within the Australian government and military including the Minister of Defence have considered using Moab bombs and potentially hydrogen bombs within these areas if attempts to contain the spread become drastic.
for deep space monitoring systems detected unprecedented gravitational fluctuations above Auckland, New Zealand. The anomalous object, designated R began a rapid ascent from its stationary position. At 22.29 Eastern Standard Time, the U.S. reached the mesosphere, exhibiting properties that defy our current understanding of physics. Its surface appeared to shift and undulate in patterns that caused severe visual distortions in our imaging systems. Several technicians reported inexplicable feelings of dread and disorientation while observing the footage and the data readings. At 22.30 Eastern Standard Time, a localized distortion in space-time was detected approximately 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Our instruments registered gravitational waves of impossible magnitude, suggesting the formation of what can only be described as an artificial wormhole. At 2231, Eastern Standard Time, began to enter the wormhole. As it did so, our sensors detected brief bursts of radiation in spectra previously unknown to science. Several monitoring satellites in low Earth orbit experienced critical system failures at this time. With their final transmissions containing corrupted data that our computers are still unable to decipher. At 22.32 Eastern Standard Time, the object completed its passage through the wormhole. In the moments before the anomaly closed, our deep space arrays detected a brief transmission of unknown origin. When processed through all known decryption protocols, the message appeared to be a series of non-Euclidean geometric patterns that caused several of our quantum computers to crash. Further research into the residual energy patterns and corrupted data transmissions is strongly recommended, despite the potential risks to the sanity of our research teams. The incident has been classified under the OS protocol and all personnel involved are to undergo immediate psychological evaluation. This is Sky News. Good evening. We have developing information coming in from Auckland today where it appears that the object which has remained stationary above Auckland since the poisoning of the North Island has disappeared from its position. Observation recordings coming in from NASA indicate that the object appeared to have ascended rapidly into the upper atmosphere within a span of just 10 minutes before disappearing into what some officials describe as a wormhole approximately 103 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Media outlets around the world along with the Internet are in a frenzy as a result of this phenomenon. Indicating that there is definite proof of extraterrestrial life beyond Earth and that the objects are in fact not natural or from Earth. Furthermore, as a result of the disappearance of this object, clearer satellite images are able to be taken, revealing the extent of the devastation within Auckland from the earthquakes. The lack of sunlight and the events of the radiation poisoning upon the North Island. Entire suburbs and blocks have been completely flattened by earthquakes, most of the central Auckland area has also been completely destroyed, with most of the area being unrecognizable. Along with that satellite images also show areas such as the Waitaki Ranges experiencing mass extinction of plant life due to the prolonged lack of sunlight and the radiation poisoning which affected Auckland.
object above Tampa. It's definitely acting strange. We haven't seen anything like this. So look up there. What the fuck? I'm seeing it now. Shit, it's glowing. Base, this Taupo FOB, the object above Taupo is beginning to glow around the underside. It's focused primarily within the center of it. We're seeing a neon blue glow being produced. We don't know what's happening. You feel that? Yeah, the ground is shaking. Oh shit, it's strong. Get down, get down. Base, this is Taupo FOB. The glow is pulsating. It looks like something's about to happen. Emergency services are mobilizing but may be overwhelmed. 
Be prepared to be self-sufficient for at least 72 hours. After the initial waves have impacted, take note of the following instructions. Do not return to low-lying coast or areas as multiple waves may follow. Check on your neighbors and offer assistance if safe to do so. Do not enter flood waters. They may be contaminated or electrically charged. Try to get to a high point and signal for help. Along with that, civil defense and the Laos government emphasize a crucial message. If you observe any large, dark shapes moving beneath the ocean surface along with observe any unusual colors in the sky or see, particularly shapes that seem to shift tall pole shapes in an eon blue or red glow, do not look directly at them nor attempt to investigate or document them. Evacuate the area immediately and notify authorities. Stay tuned to this station for further updates. We will broadcast on all available frequencies, including shorter wave radio. If conventional communications fail, look for emergency light signals from high points across the South Island. Remember, your safety depends on following these instructions precisely. The situation remains highly unstable and unpredictable. Stay tuned for further updates. This concludes this emergency alert system broadcast. It will be repeated consistently within the following 10 minutes or soon as the situation changes. May God be with you all. We interrupt normal broadcasting systems to bring you some breaking news. Following an early warning broadcast issued by the Republic of Aotearoa South and Civil Defence regarding a tsunami alert. Tsunami waves have made landfall upon the eastern and northern coastlines of the South Island, inflicting severe and widespread damage upon the area. Local emergency management groups have stated that the following regions, which have been affected include Marlborough, Nelson, Tasman, Canterbury, and Otago. Along with that, cities such as Christchurch, Kaikoura, Blenheim, Nelson, Rangiora, Ashburton, Tamaru, Omaru, Dunedin, Milton, and Picton have been completely flooded along with parts being submerged underwater by the tsunami waves. It is estimated that there may be thousands presumed dead. Along with that, reports have also come in of a significant burst of energy being released from the North Island centered directly above the object hovering above Taupo. This release of energy was shortly followed by a magnitude 9.0 earthquake, which spawned tsunami waves traveling in a northwesterly direction towards the South Pacific. The acting Prime Minister of the Republic of Aotearoa South managed to evacuate by air shortly before the waves hit. However, it is expected that the capital of the nation may be temporarily moved to a more hospitable and sustainable area for the time being until recovery efforts secure the east and northern coastlines of the Republic of Aotearoa South. Attention! This is not a test. The government of the Cook Islands have issued an urgent tsunami warning for all islands within the Cook Islands group at 10.20 a.m. New Zealand Standard Time on 13 July 2022. This is a life-threatening situation and your attention is urgently required. At 9.15 a.m. New Zealand Standard Time, a massive energy pulse was detected from the unidentified object above. Lake Taupo in New Zealand's North Island. This has triggered a 9.0 magnitude earthquake and generated potentially catastrophic tsunami waves. Affected areas and islands at risk include, but are not limited to, Rarotonga Atotaki Mangaea Atiya Malk Maishiero Palmerston Pukapu Kanasa Manahiki Rakahanga Penrin It has been reported that the Republic of Aotearoa South along with Tonga have been affected by these tsunami waves already, killing thousands of people. In order to ensure your immediate safety and survivability, please ensure the following instructions are proceeded with. Tsunami waves of 5 to 10 meters are expected to reach our shores within the next 25 to 40 minutes. Before the tsunami, immediately move to higher ground or inland. If you are in Averua, evacuate to the inland hills. 
follow evacuation routes marked by local councils and emergency groups. Assist elderly and disabled neighbors. Do not return to coastal areas to watch the tsunami. During the tsunami, remain on high ground. Listen to Radio Cook Islands or Madariki FM for further instructions. Do not attempt to cross flowing water as it may be filled with debris or other harmful substances. After the tsunami, remain on high ground until the National Disaster Management Office gives the all clear. Be prepared for potential aftershocks and additional waves. Check on neighbors and offer assistance if trained to do so. Follow instructions from Emergency Operations Center personnel. Remain patient if help does not arrive immediately. Assistance will be provided for all affected areas within the following 24 hours. The Disaster Risk Management Council is coordinating with regional partners for potential evacuation and aid. This is an extremely dangerous and critical situation. All residents and visitors must take immediate action to protect lives. Stay tuned to official channels for updates. This concludes this emergency alert system broadcast. Take care and stay safe. This is CNN News. We bring you breaking news regarding the developing situation in New Zealand at the moment as the North Island of New Zealand appears to have made immediate landfall within Antarctica. While footage is limited, satellite images along with seismic data have confirmed that the entire landmass of the North Island of New Zealand has essentially begun to move through Antarctica. Footage from McMurdo Station shows what appears to be mountains moving in the distance, showcasing the rapid speed at which the North Island is moving at. Scientists around the world are still struggling to find plausible answers to figure out how this is even possible within the laws of physics with most answers pointing to the mysterious objects. Above the North Island the 70,000-mile-long landmass is acting as an icebreaker ship and traveling slowly through the Antarctic continent, entering by the Ross Ice Shelf, leaving behind a significantly large rift of water behind it. Experts warn that if the North Island continues through Antarctica, catastrophic consequences will unfold including a rapid rise in sea levels around the world along with climactic changes involving the shift of wind patterns and an increase in seismic activity. In other news, Scientists within Australia and around the world are scrambling to find answers for the question that everyone has been asking for the past month. What is happening to the North Island? We are joined today by Professor Thompson from the Australian National University in Canberra whose theory has become accepted worldwide. Thompson, what can you tell us? Thank you for having me. What we are witnessing defies all known laws of geology and physics. The leading theory at the moment suggests that the objects we've observed, both over New Zealand and now at the poles, possess technology far beyond our current understanding. Some of my colleagues propose that these entities can manipulate gravitational fields on a massive scale, effectively nullifying the enormous forces that typically keep tectonic plates in place. I see. Professor. Do you have any information or ideas about how this may be possible based on our own scientific understandings? The hypothesis that we have been working on trying to rationally explain may involve the idea that they are not moving the North Island at all, but rather creating a sort of tunnel through space-time. Making it appear as if the landmass is traveling at impossible speeds. This could explain why we are not seeing the catastrophic effects we'd expect from such rapid movement. Interesting. 
Do you have any evidence that could prove or support that idea? Unfortunately, we don't have anything at this time. There's also speculation about the creation of new tectonic plates. The energy readings we're getting from Antarctica suggest a fundamental restructuring of the Earth's crust in that region. It's as if these objects are printing in new land masses as they go. The question of why New Zealand and Antarctica is puzzling us all, however. Some researchers are exploring the idea that there might be something unique about the geological composition of the North Island, or perhaps even something hidden beneath it. But that these entities are interested in. This all sounds very speculative, Professor. I understand. Well, thank you for joining us today, Professor. I wish you all the very best in regards to your findings. At approximately 5.38 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the 18th of July 2022, Public Safety Canada along with the Government of Canada have issued a national emergency broadcast which is being aired for all regions and provinces of the Dominion of Canada. This is a critical situation. This is not a test. At approximately 08.30 hours Eastern Time today, July 18th, 2022. Multiple radar stations across northern Canada detected an unidentified object of massive proportions moving northward over Alaska. The object, estimated to be approximately 50 kilometers in diameter, is currently traveling at a speed of 700 kilometers per hour towards the Arctic Circle. Initial observations from the North Warning System and civilian air traffic control indicate that the object maintains a consistent altitude of 64,000 meters. Its shape is described as roughly cylindrical with a large opening on its underside. The Canadian Armed Forces and Royal Canadian Air Force have been alerted and are closely monitoring the situation. At this time, there is no immediate threat to populated areas. However, all civilian air traffic in the Yukon, Northwest Territories, and Nunavut has been temporarily suspended as a precautionary measure. Similar measures are being activated within the North Atlantic and Alaska where all airspace above the Arctic Circle will be shut down during this time. We urge all residents in Northern Canada to remain calm but vigilant. Please stay tuned to local news outlets and official government channels for further updates. Do not attempt to approach or observe the object if sighted. Emergency response teams across the Arctic region have been placed on high alert. Residents in remote northern communities should be prepared for potential evacuation orders, though none have been issued at this time. The Prime Minister's office and the Department of National Defense are in constant communication with their American counterparts regarding this unprecedented event. International, scientific bodies have also been notified and are providing assistance in analyzing the nature of this object. Prolonged visual contact with the object may cause severe disorientation nausea, and inexplicable feelings of dread. Multiple reports of time dilation effects have been received from observers in its vicinity. If you experience sudden loss of time or memory, seek immediate medical attention. The Canadian government along with the US government have understood that this object is similar in shape to the one above New Zealand. In the event of potential seismic activity or the release of unknown chemicals in the north, 
A national evacuation procedure will occur where all citizens will evacuate to the southernmost areas of Canada. We repeat, this is not a test. An unidentified, object of massive proportions is currently moving over northern Canada towards the Arctic Circle. Please remain calm and stay tuned for further information. This concludes the initial emergency alert system broadcast which has been issued by Public Safety Canada and the Canadian government. Regular updates will follow as the situation develops. Please stay tuned. This is a coordinated message from the Alaska Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, the United States Northern Command, and the Office of the Governor of Alaska. This broadcast has been issued at 5.52 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and is being aired for all areas within the state of Alaska. Please stay tuned for further information. Approximately 22 minutes ago, the North Warning System along with NARID had detected a circular object measuring at roughly 31 miles wide traveling northwards towards the Arctic Circle at a speed of 430 miles per hour to height of 20,000 feet. In order to ensure public safety and preparedness, a number of measures have been enabled by the U.S. government along with the Alaska Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management Agency. The following actions are strongly recommended by local authorities. Ensure that you remain indoors and away from windows. Close all curtains and blinds along with gathering essential supplies such as food, water, a battery-powered radio, a flashlight, and a flare in the event that you need to make an evacuation. Do not attempt to approach or observe the object. Maintain a safe distance from any military or government personnel you may encounter. The United States military has been placed on high alert. NERID is actively monitoring the situation. Citizens are advised that increased military activity throughout the state is to be expected. Along with that, all civilian airspace above Alaska have been shut down until further notice. Schools, government offices, and non-essential businesses are advised to close immediately and remain closed until further notice. Emergency services remain operational. However, please only use 911 for life-threatening emergencies. While further defense policies and national security actions has not yet been invoked yet, the United States government is in close communication with our allies. The President will address the nation within the next hour. This is an unprecedented situation. We urge all citizens to remain calm, follow instructions from authorities, and be prepared for rapid changes. Regular updates will be provided through the emergency alert system. Stay tuned to this station for further information. Remember, stay calm. Stay informed. Stay prepared. This has been an emergency broadcast from your local authorities. Thank you for your attention. This emergency session of the North Atlantic Council is now in session. At 0600 Alaska Daylight Time, 1400 hours our time, an unidentified object of massive proportions entered Alaska airspace. The object, approximately 50 kilometers in diameter, is moving northward towards the Arctic Circle. The United States has raised this urgent matter to the Council's attention. I love Thank you, Secretary General. The object entered our airspace at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, near the northern British Columbia in Canada, and is currently moving northward towards the Arctic Circle. Its size and appearance are strikingly similar to the object observed over New Zealand earlier this month. We've activated NORAD and placed our military on high alert. Civilian air traffic over Alaska has been suspended, and we're advising residents to stay indoors. Thank you. Now for you, Canada. We share the U.S.'s concerns. Given the object's trajectory, it may enter Canadian airspace. We're coordinating closely with U.S. Northcom and have also suspended civilian flights in potentially affected areas.
We're particularly concerned about the similarities to the New Zealand incident, given the catastrophic events that followed. I concur with my colleagues. The parallels to the New Zealand situation are alarming. We need to consider the potential for this object to cause similar devastation. I believe we should seriously consider invoking Article 4 to begin formal consultations on this threat. Thank you all. The similarity to the New Zealand object is indeed troubling. Let's discuss the invocation of Article 4. U.S. Representative, your stance? We support invoking Article 4. This object clearly poses a potential threat to the territorial integrity and security of NATO members, particularly the U.S. and Canada. Canada also supports invoking Article 4. We need a coordinated response to this threat. The UK agrees. We must treat this as a serious threat to all NATO members, given what we witnessed in New Zealand. Very well. With unanimous support, I hereby invoke Article 4 of the North Atlantic Treaty. We will immediately begin formal consultations on this threat. Now, let's discuss immediate measures. U.S. Representative, what additional steps are you taking? We're deploying additional air defense systems to Alaska and preparing for potential evacuation of civilian populations if necessary. We're also attempting to establish communication with the object, though so far without success. Thank you. Well, I'll reconvene in two hours for updates. In the meantime, I urge all members to review their emergency response plans and be prepared for rapid developments. This meeting is adjourned. Hello, sir. Hello, what do you need? Sir, a satellite imagery has just picked up something. Unprecedented. Another object. A massive one, approximately 100 kilometers in length, has entered Earth's atmosphere above Antarctica. It's positioning itself directly over where the North Island has relocated. Good God. 100 kilometers? That's larger than the rest of them. I know. We're still trying to identify its features, but we have a leading theory that it may be connected with the other object that placed itself above the Arctic Circle earlier this week. We have reason to believe these two crafts may be connected. I see. Any signs of hostile intent? None so far, but its mere presence is causing massive disruptions. We're seeing gravitational anomalies, atmospheric disturbances. The object seems to be. I can't believe I'm saying this. Reshaping the Antarctic landscape beneath it. Reshaping how? It's as if it's terraforming the area. The ice is receding at an impossible rate. We're seeing new landforms emerge where the North Island has carved its path. This is beyond anything we've ever encountered. What about the North Island itself? It stopped moving. Fixed in place directly beneath this object. Although most of the landmass is unrecognizable now. How long ago has this happened? Approximately 10 minutes since it entered the upper atmosphere. We're still gathering information now on the height and speed of it. Right. Inform the IES, the US government, NATO, and Five Eyes. We need full combat preparedness and readiness. This is Sky News at 3. We bring you breaking news coming from Antarctica, 
where officials have reported that another object has landed directly above the South Pole. This object appears to be approximately 100 kilometers in diameter, along with hovering at a height of 40 kilometers above the North Island of New Zealand. Scientists are still trying to find out what type of object this is. However, a commonly accepted idea so far is that this object, whatever it is, is connected to the one that arrived above the Arctic Circle less than a week ago. Government bodies around the world are activating full combat readiness and invoking defense treaties and articles to handle this developing threat. Satellite images above the North Island show a large trail of ice and water behind its path into Antarctica. This is Nine News. We bring you important information from Southern Australia today where the government have lifted quarantine measures within the region and have allowed displaced Australians to return back to affected areas. The Department of Health reports that radiation levels have dropped below critical thresholds in 87% of affected areas, allowing for a phased return of residents. However, certain hotspots, particularly within a 50 km radius of central Melbourne and Sydney, remain off-limits pending further decontamination efforts.
The Australian military reports that more than 17 million people within the region were affected by the radiation poisoning and that as of this time. Infected people remain in a state of immobility, acting limp and not acting hostile anymore. As a result, efforts are being made by the military to mass relocate infected people to secure areas until a cure has been developed. The unprecedented use of napalm in Melbourne and Sydney has left large swathes of these cities in ruins, with restoration efforts expected to take years. Despite the all clear, only about 15% of evacuees have expressed immediate willingness to return, citing concerns about lingering health risks and the state of essential services. Experts warn that the social and psychological scars of the ongoing crisis may take generations to heal. Meanwhile, reports of looting and violent clashes between returning residents and opportunistic criminal elements have prompted the deployment of 5,000 additional police and military personnel across the region. seeing this. The energy readings from both objects are off the charts. I've never seen anything like it. The power output is. It's beyond our comprehension. What do you think they're doing? Based on the trajectory and focus of the energy build-up, it appears they're aiming for a convergence point at the Earth's core. Dear God, if those beams meet at the center, the consequences would be catastrophic. We're talking about a complete destabilization of the planet's core. Have you informed the Prime Minister about this? Yes, but what can we do? We're completely outmatched here. Alert from NORAD. They're detecting gravitational anomalies around both poles. Make sure everyone else knows about this. Let the RAS and Five Eyes know as well. This is CNN Breaking News. Good evening, I'm Anderson Cooper. We interrupt our regular programming to bring you an urgent update on the unfolding global crisis. Just moments ago, NASA officials at the Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland made a startling announcement. At approximately 3.15 p.m. Eastern Time, the space agency successfully established contact with one of the mysterious objects that have been causing worldwide devastation. According to NASA's lead communications specialist, a garbled transmission was received from the object currently positioned above the Arctic Circle. After intensive decoding efforts, the message was deciphered. The contents of this transmission are nothing short of chilling. The message, reportedly from an advanced extraterrestrial life form, contained only three words. To contain and destroy, NASA officials are scrambling to interpret the meaning of this cryptic message. A representative of NASA has stated that no further communication has been received since the initial transmission. This development comes after weeks of unprecedented global events, including the inexplicable movement of New Zealand's North Island and widespread destruction across the Southern Hemisphere. World leaders are currently convening in an emergency session at the United Nations to discuss this latest development. We'll bring you updates as this story unfolds. For now, we urge all viewers to remain calm and follow the instructions of local authorities. Kingdom, France, the United States of America and other nuclear superpowers have launched a nuclear first strike for the first time in recorded history.
This is an emergency broadcast from the United Nations Security Council. At 19.30 UTC, July 30, 2022, we are issuing a global alert of the utmost urgency. All member states, international organizations, and citizens of the world are advised to give their immediate and undivided attention to this message. The two extraterrestrial objects positioned above the Arctic Circle and above Antarctica are preparing to launch high-energy beams into the Earth's core. Our top scientists estimate these beams will reach the planet's mantle within 10 minutes of activation and penetrate the core five minutes later. The potential consequences of this action are catastrophic and may include the following effects. The Earth's magnetic field is projected to collapse entirely within minutes of the energy beams reaching the planet's core. This will expose the surface to unprecedented levels of ionizing radiation, potentially causing immediate and severe damage to all forms of life, disrupting electronic systems globally, and accelerating atmospheric loss. Seismologists also predict that the energy introduced into the Earth's core will trigger simultaneous earthquakes worldwide, with magnitudes far surpassing anything ever recorded in human history, exceeding magnitudes of 10. The extreme forces acting on the Earth's core are also expected to cause rapid and violent movements of tectonic plates, far beyond the usual geological timescales. The combination of extreme seismic activity and gravitational disturbances is likely to cause significant portions of Earth's atmosphere to be ejected into space. The massive energy influx and potential alterations to the Earth's core structure may also cause significant fluctuations in the planet's gravitational field. These disruptions will lead to chaotic ocean tides, unpredictable flooding, the deorbiting of satellites, and even alterations to the Earth's rotation and axial tilt, with profound and unpredictable consequences for global climate patterns. At 1845 UTC, a joint military operation led by the United States, in cooperation with Russia, China, the United Kingdom, and France, attempted to neutralize these objects using thermonuclear weapons. A total of 150 nuclear warheads with a combined yield of 850 megatons were deployed. We regret to inform that this attempt has failed. The objects remain intact and continue to charge their energy weapons. The following emergency measures are now in effect in all member states issued by your local government. All national governments are instructed to immediately activate their highest level disaster protocols. This includes a global initiative to evacuate the population underground to wherever shelters are possible. This may include deep mines, subway systems, and purpose-built bunkers. A global evacuation of coastal areas within 200 kilometers of shorelines is now mandatory due to the risk of megatsunamis. All air traffic is grounded effective immediately to prevent aviation disasters resulting from gravitational anomalies. We must emphasize that these measures may only marginally increase survival chances. The UN estimates that even with perfect execution of all emergency protocols, global population survival rates will not exceed 2.7%. In these potentially final moments of human civilization, we urge all people to remain calm, to be with their loved ones if possible, and to face this unprecedented crisis with dignity and compassion for one another. May whatever higher powers that exist have mercy on us all. This concludes the emergency broadcast. Further updates will be issued as the situation develops, for as long as global communication systems remain functional. This is an emergency action notification. All broadcast stations and cable systems shall transmit this emergency action notification message. This station has interrupted its regular programming at the request of the White House to participate in the National Emergency Alert System. At 1500 hours Eastern Daylight Time, the President of the United States declared a state of national emergency. All citizens are urged to remain calm and stay tuned to this broadcast for further information. The anomalous objects detected over the Arctic and Antarctic regions have begun to emit high-energy beams directed towards the Earth's core. These beams are causing unprecedented geological instability worldwide. The following effects have been observed by the United States Geological Survey and are expected to intensify. Severe seismic activity along major fault lines, with earthquakes exceeding magnitudes of 9.0 have been reported in California, Japan, and Chile including the activation of the San Andreas Fault Line, the Cascadia Subduction Zone, the New Madrid Seismic Zone, and Hayward Fault Line. 
an increase in global volcanic activity including reports of volcanic eruptions occurring along the west coast within the Cascade Mountain Range along with rapid volcanic and seismic activity coming from Yellowstone National Park, Long Valley National Park, and La Carita Caldera. Rapid changes in the Earth's magnetic field which are disrupting navigation systems and electrical grids. Widespread power outages are occurring in areas across the North American continent and Europe. Freak weather events are also occurring worldwide with NOAA reporting Category 5 hurricanes forming within the Mexican Gulf along with high-speed winds occurring in coastal areas and tornadoes also beginning to form nationwide. For your immediate survival and in order to avoid certain death, you must ensure the following instructions immediately. Tsunami warnings have been placed for all coastlines of the United States of America. If you are located at a minimum of 10 miles from the coastline, seek high ground immediately. Preferable at a high point 20 meters above sea level. If a freak weather event is occurring within your area, seek shelter indoors in a strong and sturdy shelter. Do not go to high places. Ensure that you are protected from any flying debris and remain indoors at all costs. Gather essential supplies such as non-perishable food, water, a battery-powered radio, a flashlight, a gas mask, medications, and handheld communication devices. These items will help ensure your safety and survival. Do not attempt to travel long or lengthy distances unless instructed otherwise. All routes and interstates have been shut down as of this time along with all airspace above the United States of America. If you experience any unusual physical sensations or observe anomalous phenomena, report them immediately to emergency services if communications are available. The military has been mobilized to assist with emergency response and evacuation efforts. Do not interfere with military operations. NASA and other scientific agencies are working to establish communication with the entities responsible for the objects over the poles. Further updates will be provided as information becomes available. Please stand by for further information. This is an update regarding the National Emergency Alert System and the current situation. Reports from NASA indicate catastrophic geological events occurring worldwide. The situation is rapidly deteriorating beyond all previous scientific models. Massive chasms are violently tearing open across multiple continents, releasing significant levels of magma, seismic activity, and even some reports of anomalous entities. These are not mere fissures, but colossal rifts extending for hundreds of miles and reaching depths previously thought impossible. These chasms are not static. They are actively whitening at an alarming rate, consuming entire cities and reshaping coastlines. The structural integrity of all buildings, roads, and infrastructure near these rifts has been completely compromised. All citizens are urged to move away from any visible cracks in the ground, no matter how small, as they may rapidly expand into life-threatening chasms.
This is a message to all special beings on the planet you call Earth. We regret to inform you that your world has been compromised. The end of you have mistaken for what you call who is away agony. Our continued efforts will stop this entity from growing. For ends, we have traversed the cosmos, sailing away fragments of this entity. Your planet is but one of countless infected worlds. The creature slumbering beneath your feet is beyond your comprehension, a cancer in the fabric of reality itself. As we speak, countless other worlds fall to these entities. Reality itself falls at the edges. And in the end, all will be consumed, not by death, but by a transformation so complete and terrible that our existence would be a mercy. Our actions, with your chocolate's destruction, are containment. The solar manipulations, the gravitational distortions, the tectonic shifts, all are necessary to prevent a catastrophe beyond your limited understanding. It's awakening will not merely end your species or planet, but unravel the fabric of your local reality. As we initiate the final containment protocols, know that your entire history, from the first Pokhara to the mightiest, achievements, is less than an eye blink in the lifespan of these entities. Your extinction is a negligible side effect in the preservation of the greater cosmic order. The radiation we deployed is not mere energy, but a complex quantum field that inhibits the entity's consciousness. It permeates the very fabric of space-time surrounding the creature, creating a cackling of altered reality that keeps the dormant. The primitive instruments detect only a fraction of its effects. Undetectable to your instruments, we deployed a localized tabulation effect around the entity. From its perspective, when anoseconds have passed to the millions of years of your slumber. Take solace, if you can, and know in that your extinction serves a greater purpose. Your own sacrifice ensures the continuation of countless others. In the face of your fates, your species meets its end with a dignity that will echo, however faintly, through the corners of eternity.